The Vietnam War was a long, costly, and divisive conflict that pitted the communist government of North Vietnam against South Vietnam and its principal ally, the United States. The conflict was intensified by the ongoing Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. At the heart of the conflict was the desire of North Vietnam, which had defeated the French colonial administration of Vietnam in 1954, to unify the entire country under a single communist regime modeled after those of the Soviet Union and China. The Geneva Accords was a ceasefire among Southeastern Asian countries in agreement with the French withdrawing troops from Vietnam. The meeting of the Geneva Conference ended with an agreement to temporarily split Vietnam into two at the line known as the 17th Parallel. North Vietnam became the communist state and the South Vietnam was democratic. America's involvement with Vietnam pre-1964 was largely driven by the Cold War. America believed that communism must be contained and governments susceptible to infiltration and takeover should be assisted. If this did not occur, communism, they believed, would expand its global reach. The Gulf of Tonkin Resolution was presented in 1964 to show support for the President's resolve to fend off any armed strike and stop any aggression. It served as a primary constitutional justification for the Vietnam War and was approved by both chambers of Congress. U.S. offensive in northern Vietnam that vastly increased military involvement and display of strength throughout bombardment. This put pressure on Viet Congo to reduce their own push on southern Vietnam. Search and destroy missions were military tactics that were used by the U.S. in the war. The strategy consists of dropping a large amount of ground forces into enemy territory at one time and seeking out the enemy, killing them, and immediately withdrawing. The Mai La Massacre occurred in one of the several sections of Song Mai Village. 300 to 500 men, women, and children were brutally attacked and raped by American soldiers. The military proceeded to cover up this incident, and the media even presented the battle in a positive light. Northern Vietnam and communist forces organized an attack against South Vietnam. The Tet Offensive was a major loss of U.S. troops. It majorly weakened the public support in America for the U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War. The Pentagon Papers contained the U.S. history of an involvement in Indochina post-World War II, which were leaked to the public and showed how the U.S. had been involved with Vietnam since World War II. The credibility gap caused the public to not fully trust what the government was telling them about the Vietnam War. Vietnamization was a strategy to reduce American involvement in the Vietnam War by transferring all military responsibilities to South Vietnam. President Nixon believed it would prepare South Vietnam to act in their own event defense against North Vietnamese takeover, and it allowed the United States to leave Vietnam with its honor intact. Across the nation, many people were taking control of matters and rejected the war and the U.S.'s involvement. One of these events spurred the Kent State Massacre, which resulted in the death of college-age people as the National Guard opened fire on them. The end of the Vietnam War finally came when the northern Vietnamese crashed through the presidential palace in South Vietnam's capital, Saigon, and it fell to the northern Vietnamese army. Hey, in your opinion, how was the musical community affected by the controversy of the Vietnam War? It was felt even when um, the songs weren't directly about um, about Vietnam, mm -hmm. it was probably the overarching issue mm -hmm. of, of the time, like at Woodstock, for instance, in say 1969, which is a good, uh, you know, it was 1969, height of the war, um, you know what, there were half a million people there, 400,000 people there, you probably could not have found more than a handful of people that would have been like pro-war. Right. Okay, yeah. it, it was kind of a unifying force, the idea of being against the war among mm -hmm. young people at the time. Um, so it was felt uh, just throughout youth culture. Mm -hmm. In my family, my father was a construction worker. They tended to be very conservative about the war. 
and he was very conservative about the war until about 1972, which is when he started worrying that I would have to go. Right. And then he very much changed his mind. Also by that time, he was working with some young men who had gone to Vietnam and he saw how people were coming back. It was terrifying. I remember the day after we got our draft numbers, meeting, all of us meeting in the foyer at school and talking about it and uh, uh, really worrying about it because by 1973, uh, there wasn't a heck of a lot of patriotism about it, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like there was, say, in the mid-60s or later 60s, you know. Uh, by that time, all you were hearing was these terrible stories, you know, and you felt like if you were going to go over there and something was going to happen to you, it wasn't going to be for anything, and it wound up not being for anything. Well, it all started in 1961 when President Kennedy sent some military advisors to help the South Vietnamese. Well, it turned out the South Vietnamese didn't really want to fight because after all, it was a civil war and they were fighting against their brothers and cousins, and besides, they didn't want to get hurt. So they need an excuse to for bring further troops in, and that happened in 1964 when the alleged Gulf of Tonkin incident occurred, and President Johnson said the United States naval ships had been attacked by North Vietnamese naval ships, which later turned out to be a lie, which led to the involvement of the entire U.S. military. President Johnson and his administration believed that the U.S. needed to become more involved in the dispute between North and South Vietnam. They had been teamed up with and aided the South, but South Vietnamese troops, not American, were the ones carrying out attacks onto the North. On August 2, 1964, two U.S. destroyer ships were struck down by North Vietnamese military forces. A second attack on U.S. ships was reported again on August 4. Suspicions about the second incident began to arise when pilot James Stockdale reported that he had viewed the alleged attack from the air and saw only American ships, no others, at the time of this attack. Still, President Johnson used the second attack to gain Congress's permission to join the war. The Gulf of Tonkin Resolution was then passed. This resolution allowed President Johnson to make whatever decisions he believed were necessary in order to retaliate violence from the North. Suspicions rose that the August 4th accusations were not true and rather validation for the intervention of the U.S. Nearly 40 years after the alleged Gulf of Tonkin incident, documents released in the early 2000s confirmed that the declaration for war had in fact been based upon a lie. Back in 1970, and President Nixon decided to invade Cambodia, which is right next to North and South Vietnam, uh, a neutral country, by the way, because he wanted to destroy the sanctuaries for the North Vietnamese. Well, people all over the country protested. They were not happy that he had done it. The desire to remove U.S. troops from Vietnam sparked protests on various college campuses across the nation. As American casualties piled up and the draft continued to pull young men into battle, many Americans also began to participate in these movements. On October 21, 1967, 100,000 protesters gathered at the Lincoln Memorial and marched to the Pentagon. Tensions rose even higher when students protesting at Kent State in Ohio were met by the National Guard. The National Guard ordered these protesters to disperse and proceeded to open fire into the crowd when the students refused, killing four and injuring nine. The incident became known as the Kent State Massacre and enraged citizens across the country who were also begging for the removal of troops. Even though you were not drafted, did you have to go through any training? Yes, I went through military training because I enlisted in the reserves. And I had uh, basic training as an infantry soldier in the Army, and I was in the uh, Army Reserves for a period of six years, and I went to the Provo Marshall General School in uh, Georgia, and I uh, was a military policeman, and that training took six months uh, six weeks of basic training and then 16 weeks in the school and then the rest of the time was in practical application training and I was assigned to a combat military police unit. After the war was over, did you find the overall mood of the U.S. and the citizens living here to change it all? For a period of time afterwards, they were very uh, anti uh, uh, congratulatory to the soldiers, 
that were coming back from it. It was the first time soldiers were ever not cheered. And uh, I felt it wasn't the soldiers' fault at all. They, they were involved in it because they were thought they were defending their country, but it was, it was really a, a war that was, uh, uh, I think it was politically motivated. Well, I'm Lieutenant Commander Furman L. Pinson, U.S. Navy pilot, uh, fixed wing and helicopter. I remember a lot because I was there for a couple of years. I, uh, I, I've got the first flight of helicopters and some uh, twin engine uh, while I was stationed there. Even got in a seaplane for a short flight. We had to uh, to modify aircraft for uh, uh, anti-submarine, uh, anti. Uh, SAM missiles so that uh, the pilots could escape the SAMs. Vietnam really didn't uh, affect me much. I'd go in and land and and uh, visit, uh, liaison with people, mm -hmm. take care of some problems, get on a, I usually have to mooch a flight somewhere. But as a pilot, we can we jump in wherever and uh, mooch a flight back to the Philippines and that was it. We had to evacuate because of a typhoon coming in. We went down to Zamboanga, so I got to see that. It was, it was not a pleasant war, but it didn't affect me much because I didn't have to partake in. I went to Vietnam off and on on liaison work with the, the, the mostly uh, Marine jets. It's like any other job. Get up, have breakfast, and go to work. Yeah. Most of us uh, would much rather be flying than have a ground job, but we, you have to rotate in the military. You have to get some uh, job, the ground job. Not a, not all not they're not all flying, you know. So that's just the way it goes. And whether you like it or you don't like it, it's that's the way it goes. I wasn't so happy that I because I didn't get to fly much. It went on for a long time. I was. Sorry that we got involved the way we did. I, I would, uh, you could call me a protester almost, because I just didn't think we should be there. But you know, it's the way the that's the way politics goes, and uh, all of us in the Navy did our job because that's what's our job. I was back and forth between Japan and and the, uh, I didn't go to Vietnam very much. In the Philippines for two years, we were the end of the supply line. I mean, almost all of the stuff that goes to Vietnam, its way to Vietnam, lands in uh, on our base, our, or the Air Force base, which was about 20 minutes up the road. Clark Field, which is gone now. And I was at Subic Bay, QB Point, and that's gone now. And I got to bring my family over. My wife and I got to go to India. So we lived there. Uh, I don't think they were there the full two years. By the time they, could, you know, got sent over, and we all flew, we all went back home together. But we were living on on base. Furniture was all provided and all that stuff. I just stayed on the base. Now, when you're sleeping and you hear boom, boom, when the, when it, you know some of them are incoming and you wonder how. How close am I to the what, fence? What was your role and job assignment for the Army? I was a heavy equipment tank operator and mechanic. And um, M60A1 tank. And um, what was it like on base? Uh, in, in st rigid, strict, and clean. Uh, what was your daily routine like? Reported to the motor pool every day. And then uh, after a year in there, I became a driver for an officer, a captain. Uh, how did your peers regard the Vietnamese? Not too good, <laughs> I would say. And uh, in your opinion, do you think that the United States won or lost the Vietnam War? 
lost it. Do you have any stories about your time in the military? Uh, all kinds of, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be nice to put them on the school thing. <laughs> this, the, uh... Yeah, I enjoyed it. What did you think of White Sands, New Mexico? Cool. I watched the Pershing Missile. I was in a Pershing Missile Company, and I watched them launch it. The first time ever, they, they, the uh, government flew a missile over civilian territory in the United States. The Pershing uh, missile was a nuclear warhead missile, and we put that in uh, Turkey and uh, Germany and aimed it towards Russia. All right, so I'm here with my grandpa, Jim Zander, who was a veteran in the Vietnam War. So before the war, um, what was your stance or your opinion about the war? I really didn't know much about it. Uh, nobody wanted to go, but we didn't know the severity of it and how long it would last. Describe what you saw when you first got to Vietnam. Did you remember like all like the flashes? Right. It, it was pretty country, but at night there was just explosions going on all over into the hillside. A lot of a lot of high hills over there, and at night it's frightening because there's explosion after explosion. And uh, our job as infantry was to uh, go approach and find out if it's enemy and to make contact with it. So anyway, our first our first battle. We, we got a sniper and uh, the platoon sergeant told us to go out and take, take care of the sniper. Well, the two sides, one went north, one went south, and uh, they got into a battle with each other. And three, three of our own guys were killed. They call it friendly fire, but it was a big mistake. Majority of the time in around and in July, right? Right. Uh, almost our entire time was fighting in July area. Okay. And uh, we wouldn't go into Cambodia, which is next door, but um, that was a no-no. Okay. And what was the morale of the Army in Vietnam? Like, what was the opinion, I guess, well, how they feeling? Well, it, it wasn't good. Uh, no, nobody really wanted to be there. And uh, when we found out that the Orvins, which is the South Vietnamese Army, when we get into a firefight, they would, they would run away. Uh, if the enemy was coming up the North Hill, they would run off the South. So we were... Uh, we didn't like fighting for their country when they wouldn't uh, help us. So morale was pretty bad, and then there got to be a little racial issues, and that wasn't good. So life went on. What was the Tet counteroffensive? What was so different about that one? During Tet, that was their Lunar New Year, uh, January 31st, about 2.30 in the morning. We were out in the bush. And we were radio call told us to get 100% alert because they were overrunning all the major cities. And um, so everybody's awake and alert. And of course, being out in the boonies, we could see big explosions all throughout the different towns. Some of them 20, 30 miles away, you see the sky light up. And uh, their purpose was to try to uh, convince the United States to get out of South Vietnam because they was going to take over. But uh, anyway, we, the United States won almost every major battle in Vietnam, but we lost the war. And the reason was the people in, in America, they couldn't stand all these body bags coming home. You had protests in campuses like Kent State, Washington, people were, 100,000 people got there throwing their wards in, in, away. Um, so the protests at home is really what caused the war to end. Okay. But I, I did land in, in St. Louis, uh, well, land in Fort Lewis, Washington, and I caught a flight to St. Louis. And when I was in St. Louis, uh, these little hairy Christians would come up, little guys, white robes and long hair. They handed me some roses, and uh, I thanked them, and he gets in my face, and he starts yelling this. And so a buddy of mine, he hit the guy upside the head and dropped him. And I asked why he did that. He said, well, he's wanting to sell that rose. And here's this poor guy laying on the floor, so I give his roses back and walk away. <laughs> but right. anyway, uh, we was great, grateful to be home, and I met my bride and had four little babies. Isn't that right? That's right. <laughs>